Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids. Now, about three or four weeks ago, I published a video to the channel called Back Up Your Data, The Ultimate Guide. Now, I strongly recommend you go back and watch that video because I look at various options for backing up your important data and files. Things like backing up to a hard drive, a Blu-ray disc, a cloud backup, a NAS device, and even off-site backup. So please do check that video out. Now, within this video, I'm going to look at more in depth at the products I use and also show you how I set up an off site or remote backup, which gives you extra peace of mind that your data is secure if you were to lose access to or entirely lose your local backup. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using two NAS devices. Now, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. And for want of a better description, a NAS device is a box of tricks with some hardware inside. And you can install one, two, three, maybe up to eight or even more hard drives into this box. And then you connect it to your local area network with an Ethernet cable. And then it allows you to centrally store your files and then access them on various computers, laptops, tablet devices, or even smartphones. Now there are plenty of brands to choose from when you come to choosing your NAS device. The brand that I choose to use is Synology. And the reason I've stuck with the Synology brand is that they've got a large variety of different hardware to suit all budgets. They come with a five year warranty, very, very reliable. And they're also managed by their disk station manager software. And this allows you to very easily set up your NAS device, but also to further extend the feature set. You can install applications to really make your NAS device much more than just a central file storage location. Now, the model that I use for my local storage is a DiskStation DS1815+. Plus. But what I'm going to talk to you about in this video, when I show you the demonstration of setting an off-site backup, really can be applied to any of the models within their range. Now this particular one, the DS1815 Plus, is an eight bay NAS device. So you can install up to eight three and a half inch SATA hard drives or eight two and a half inch solid state drives. In this particular model, there's a quad core CPU running at 2.4 gigahertz, and you also get two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. And you can further expand that to six gigabytes if you so wish. And this really allows it to deliver some amazing performance, over 450 megabytes per second on the read speed, and it can write data to the drives at 420 megabytes per second. Now also on the back of this particular model, you don't get one, two or three, you get four gigabit ethernet ports. And this allows you to take advantage of link aggregation. And what that basically means is if you connect more than one ethernet port or more than one cable to your network and one of those connections malfunctions, then you've got less chance of your service or data transfer being disrupted. Now this is less important if you're using it within a home environment, but if you're using it within a small office or a larger business environment, then it's very important because you're going to have multiple users writing data to the drives at the same time. Also on the back, you will find USB 3 and eSATA ports, and these allow you to connect external storage devices. And these are really useful for transferring data to external hard drives. And as I mentioned earlier on in this video, all of this is managed with the Disk Station Manager software, which you'll see in action very shortly. So let's have a look at hard drive selection. Now, I mentioned earlier on in this video that you can install either three and a half inch SATA hard drives with moving parts, or indeed two and a half inch solid state drives. Now, the hard drive that I choose to use in most of my NAS devices are the Western Digital Red range. And in my DS1815 Plus, I've in fact got four six terabyte Western Digital Red hard drives. There's also a Western Digital Red Pro range as well. Now, with the standard Red range, you get three years limited warranty. With the Red Pro hard drives, you get five years limited warranty. And they're really designed to work within a NAS environment. And that's very important because your NAS device is very likely to be powered on and in use 
24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, if you opt for either the five terabyte or six terabyte Western Digital Red Drive, or all of the Western Digital Red Pro drives, they come with NASWare 3, which further optimizes the drives for use within the NAS environment. So now I'm gonna show you how to set up a remote or offsite backup. And I'm gonna be using two Synology NAS devices, and you can see them in these top tabs here. I've got my Synology Disk Station DS1815 Plus on the left tab, and I've got my second NAS device, a DS415 Play, on this second tab. And this is all within a browser window. This is how you gain access to the Synology Disk Station Manager software. And you'll notice that when I flick between the two, the user interface is more or less identical. So we're gonna first set up our destination NAS device. We're gonna go into the main menu and select backup and replication. And it's here that I want to set up a backup service. Now I've got three different options to choose from. Network backup destination, which allows me to do things like shared folder synchronization, time backup, LUN backup, and rsync backup. We've also got time backup, which allows me to keep multiple versions of the backup data on my destination drives. Or I've in fact got network backup volume destination, and it's this option that I want to choose because I'm using my destination NAS device to completely back up everything that's on my DS1815+. Plus. So I'm gonna click apply, and that's pretty much all you need to do to set up your destination NAS device. But there is one other thing you should check, and that's if you go into your control panel and into users, and select your particular user account. Now, if you've got a Synology NAS, you would have already have completed this task. We're just gonna click edit on my account and check my permissions. And you can see here, I've got read and write access. So that's very important because I want to be able to read and write to my destination NAS device. So now we're gonna move across to this window here, which is the Disk Station Manager software for the DS1815+. Plus. This is my local NAS device. And again, we're gonna click the main menu. We're gonna go into backup and replication. And we're going to set a backup. So here we're going to click on create. And we're gonna do a data backup task. Now we don't wanna do it locally. We want to do it over the network because this is gonna be remotely located. And we're gonna click next. The server type is a Synology server. Now if we click this little down arrow, we can do it to any rsync and compatible server but we're using a second Synology NAS device. And then we can either enter the server IP here, if we know it, or we can click the little down arrow, and this will look for other devices on the network. Now at the moment, my second NAS device is local, so it's on the same network. When I move this to the off-site location, it will maybe give me a different IP address. I need to make a note of that and then enter that in this box here. But for now, we're gonna select the DS415 and we're going to pop our username in and our password. And then we're gonna click next. And then we can actually choose the backup destination name. So let's call this two and we're gonna store this in volume one and click next again. And this is the folders we're gonna to select to back up. So I've got a volume share on here, or a folder, called Geekanoids Video Backup. So we're gonna put a tick in here. If I had multiple folders, I could simply put ticks in the particular data I want to back up to the remote location. And then we click Next again. And then we can choose to enable a backup schedule. And I can choose to do this on weekdays, weekends, or daily and I'm going to set this to run every evening at 6 p.m. And this is great because I should really point this out because this is saving this, these details to the actual NAS device, I don't have to have my computer switched on for this to take place. As long as the NAS drives are actually powered on, this will take place because they've got internal clocks. So we're gonna click apply and this actually sets everything up on the local NAS device and now I've got this set up to run every day at 6 p.m. And it's as simple as that. 
Now my data that's stored on the Synology Disk Station DS1815 Plus will back up remotely to my Synology Disk Station DS415 Play. And I've got peace of mind that if I lose my local backup, it's already backed up in that remote location. So I hope you found this video useful. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to back up your data and it's really important to not have all of your data in one place. So it's a good idea to have local backups but also have some sort of secondary backup system as well. Try and get your files into the cloud or indeed on some sort of off-site backup like I've demonstrated in this video. So thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give me some feedback. You can find me on all of the social networks. Just search for Geekanoids. I'll see you all in the next video.